Hi there, I'm John from CNCROI.com and today we're going to transform a discarded wood palette into wall art using pyrography. Although pyrography is a process of using a heated metal element to burn wood, um, I consider it like nailing. Uh, even though you use a pneumatic nail, you're still nailing something even though it's not a hand one. So in my, in my world, I guess, I consider pyrography done with a laser just as, just as good as any other pyrography done by hand or a manual process. This actually comes from a wood pallet, which you'll see in the video that I take apart and I do this whole process step by step for you. Uh, the back of it is actually part of the original crate that my laser behind me came from Austria with. So it's kind of interesting, it's gone, this crate has probably been all over the place and it's got elements that come from all around the world and I'm actually using that as source material for the wall art itself. If you're wondering uh, why wood crate material costs so much because it is free material. If you go to any industrial zone there's no lack of wood crate material. And you can still sort of see it here if you look at it closely that it is wood, wood crate material. You can see the different panels there. Well there's quite a bit of work involved with going from something that looks really rough and has been dinged uh, and it's split and it's got a lot of issues with the wood. It's definitely not perfect wood. All the way to something that you could actually use to make something really nice and interesting with. In this case it's wall art. Uh, later on I'll do some furniture using it as well. There's no easy way to break down a wood pallet um, other than just do it. Uh, I had my steel tip sandals so everything was fine to take it apart, take the nails out and have a nice board. The problem is the board has been outside, inside, smashed by a forklift, uh, who knows what, uh, for years and years and years. So the top surface of it is actually really, really uh, worn but it's also not even as a result. Now there's two ways to clean the surface, one is to sand it, the other one is to plane it. I far prefer planing it, what it does is two things, it takes the crap off the top surface of the wood pallet wood and the other thing that it does, it also evens out the surface. So in this case here I wanted an even surface because I'm making wall art and if you know anything about lasers, lasers are based on focus. So for me, if I had the wood going like this all over the place, I would get different results using the laser and add other issues to the wall art. Now some people like that, some people don't. In this case here I just wanted something as even as possible. So let's take a look at me planing the wood.
is broken down, the nails are taken out, and the surface is sanded. The next step I had was to get rid of all the nail holes. In this case here, I didn't want to have nail holes going consistently across, and I didn't want them just to appear randomly across uh, the wall art because I'm doing this at around 600 dpi resolution and I wanted everything to be as sharp as possible and holes will just show up exactly where I don't want them to be that's just the way it works uh, with nail holes so what I did is I got also an industrial bandsaw so what I did is I cut it out exactly where the nail holes would be so they won't be part of this artwork so let's take a look at me doing that There is no easy way to adhere pallet wood to a solid surface. Uh, what I did here is got some help from Austria and again that's the crate our laser came in, the one that's behind me here, uh, part of the crate. And what that is is just chipboard and the chipboard is glued and uh, nailed onto the pallet wood. Now I didn't have to use glue, I didn't have to use nail, I could use just one or the other but I decided to use both just to give it a little bit more strength. Uh, during the process in the engraving laser, uh, there is no pushing or pulling on the material. So I get away with something that's not uh, totally, completely bonded together. Uh, begin, you know, this is going on a wall, and because it's going on a wall, it's not being thrown around. It doesn't need to be super strong for any you know, specific application. But I did want it to be a little bit strong because I want to bring it to, you know, whenever I do trade shows here and there. It's a nice thing to bring with me. So let's take a look at me uh, making the whole surface a solid surface and then we got to mask the surface as well.
strictly speaking, uh, laser engraving time is based on resolution more than anything else. So this image here, I could have saved myself a lot of time by engraving it at 125 dpi, but then I would lose out on all the very clear details that I wanted to show people. So as you can see here, you can even see the rivers, you can see all the little islands. So there's a lot of more detail in here on this than I first thought. And although at a distance you won't notice it, uh, I like going to trade shows and showing people what's an extreme example of what we can do here at cncri.com. The reason why I did two passes as well is the first pass is to engrave some depth into it. Second, pro The second engraving pass is not actually engraving, it's more of a darkening. Because I wanted the contrast to be higher between the light palette wood and the dark seas, uh, I guess in this case here. So let's take a look at our industrial laser doing that.
we're coming close to the completion of this wall art, you'll notice that everything is nice and sharp. Not only detail-wise, but you don't have all that those smoke stains that traditionally people think about when they see laser work. And the reason for that is because I took the time, uh, one, to sand it to begin with, so I had a you know really even surface. Second, to mask it, and then to do the laser engraving and vaporize the mask, so that you know the final process, which you're going to see now, is removing the mask and then doing some light sanding. That saves me a tremendous amount of time. Uh, sanding something like this, especially when you have open areas, is really, really difficult. And the reason for that is because your sander is not always flat, especially in orbital. It's always turning around like this. And what ends up happening is that if you have too much uh, aggressive sanding to do, what will happen is that will actually dip down and it will start to sand, let's say, some of the oceans here. Now, I didn't have that, that problem with this here because I knew what I was doing. And I knew that would be an issue ahead of time, so that's why, again, it was masked. And that's why I took the processes from the very beginning to make, save myself a lot of work at the end. So let's take, take a look at me doing that right now. This was a relatively simple project to do. It took a whole wood pallet just to make this here. And this is not even furniture. So I hope that helps to explain why uh, pallet projects cost a lot more than traditional wood projects. You know, when you go to the lumber store, you pick out your piece of cherry or walnut or maple or whatever it is. Um, you can almost use all of that wood. Well, with pallets, what you do is end up using a triage system. So you grab the pallet first, okay, well that looks good. Start breaking it down, okay, well two or three boards are no good because they have splits or they have holes or there's something wrong with it. Um, and then you run it through the planner, well that finds more material defects. And then you cut them into sides, you find more material defects. So unlike the lumber store, uh, pallet wood is triage. And that's why you have to use a lot more to begin with, like I did here. Um, I had more than enough wood to do this. I ended up having just enough for this project. So if you're looking for woodcraft uh, using pallet or any kind of wood or any kind of material for that matter, contact me at cncroi.com and we'll make it for you.